G'day everybody. Uh, we're here on the weekend in between the two weeks of early voting. We've had one week of early voting so far. Lots of postal votes coming in, lots of early votes, people voting via remote mobile polling teams as well and from overseas. I'm here with the Electoral Commissioner just to check in to see how the election's going. Tom, thanks for joining me. Evan, good morning. How's it going? Look really well. Um, the first week, there's always a couple of issues here and there as we work our way through it, as you would understand, using a large number of temporary premises and temporary staff. Uh, what have we seen today? Big increase in postal vote. Uh, I think something like 2.5 million applications uh, for postal votes, which is a big increase on the last election. We're seeing the votes coming back the other way, which is pleasing, including from overseas, which is great. So votes are coming in from all over the world. Uh, postal votes are arriving, which is fantastic. Pre-poll, um, we're seeing some big numbers for pre-poll. I think well over 1.2 million people have voted already. The prediction is, if this continues on the trend, that by next week it'll eclipse what occurred last time. So we're certainly seeing that increase in pre-poll um, and an increase in postal. We've had mobile teams going around remote parts of Australia, and that's been a really interesting part of the first week. Not without issues. We've had one team had a fairly serious accident. Luckily, they're all OK. Um, that car was a complete write-off, and we've had a team who got trapped by the side of an airstrip uh, overnight, but they're delivering the franchise in remote communities exactly the way that we would think that they would do. Yeah, great. And I know that you've been visiting some early voting centres and you even went to Lismore as well, mm. flood-affected area. There's lots of rain in Queensland at the moment. How well is that going? Yeah, look, we're watching the floods daily. The command centre is really focusing on that because that is impacting on how we deliver our supplies for, for, for polling day and, of course, for residents, how they get to polling. We're, we're developing plans and contingency plans to be able to deal with that. But it's a significant issue for us and, of course, the residents of those uh, flood-affected areas. Um, I did go to Lismore and have a look at the uh, polling places we've got up there. I, just a shout out to the university um, who have been so uh, helpful for us. Given the floods, we really struggled um, to get the sort of pre-poll centre that we would like, but the university stepped in. I know that they're hosting a number of other community uh, things as well. I think they're hosting the local TAFE, a school, a recovery centre, because there's just not premises in Lismore. Um, I think uh, overall the service offering up there will be pretty similar to what we did last time. We're doing our very best. I think last election we had seven static polling places on the day. We had one uh, pre-poll voting centre. This time around we've got two pre-poll voting centres um, and we'll have six static polling places, which isn't bad given the flood-affected nature of that. Uh, and I understand the one at Carrington Street is a little bit more accessible, so I urge people to check that requirement. But also postal votes, you can get them delivered not to your enrolled address? Yeah, that's right. Um, and I'd urge people just to jump on the website or, or phone 132326 and you can, you can ask whatever question you've got and there's some really helpful people there uh, to assist. So um, I really acknowledge the hurt that that community has been through and the difficulty. I mean, a number of people lost their homes, um, which is incredibly uh, frustrating. Uh, and difficult. Uh, and if you've got any questions at all, please, we'll, we'll, we'll do as much as we can to try and assist and please find us to do that. Yep. Thanks. Um, you mentioned overseas voting before. We've seen a lot of people talking about overseas voting. Mm. We love delivering in-person voting when we can overseas. It's a little bit different this time. What's what's happening there? Yeah, look, um, this time around, we've got voting in about 20 of our centres um, and uh, that'll cover, we think, about 50% of the people um, that we would have covered last time. Mind you, probably 50% less people overseas than there were last time as well. But we've gone the extra mile to try and make sure that everyone can have their say. So, for example, um, for the first time ever, we're using a courier service to courier the vote to every individual that's registered as an overseas voter, which is an extraordinary thing for us to do. And on the way back, we've worked with DFAT to make sure that if you send your vote to one of our diplomatic missions, it'll be put into the diplomatic bag to make sure that it gets back to us in time. Are they, I suppose, representing the views of a lot of expats out there who are um, obviously very, very keen for their vote, which mm. is fantastic. And, and we're keen them. for them to vote. Yeah, as well. exactly. Yeah. Are they actually getting there? We're couriering them, but are, are, we, are, we, mm. are we seeing them get We're there? seeing a large number of those okay. votes come back. Um, and uh, if people are worried about, you know, where is my vote, again, I'd, I'd urge them to jump on. You can track your vote, you can phone us, uh, you can visit the website um, and ask whatever questions you've got. We'll do our utmost to try and assist you. And al allow me to acknowledge that when you're overseas, you do feel isolated, and that connection to Australia through voting is very important. So we, we are doing as much as we possibly can. I acknowledge that people are frustrated if they can't turn up and vote. Um, 
we've had some feedback uh, from individuals that said, I don't want a postal vote, I want an in-person vote. Uh, you know, I don't know what to say to that other than um, there's going to be uh, well over 2 million people voting by post in Australia this election. It's not unusual uh, for that to occur and um, we'll see what we can do next time when there's no pandemic. Okay, so fabulous. Uh, how, do you, how do you feel about it all? Are you, are you happy with how it's going? Um, people voting, looking forward to the count? Yeah, look, uh, um, a media interview we did the other day, somebody said to me that for the AEC, uh, the voting period must be like Christmas. And in many ways it is. The staff are all very excited. Uh, it's our time to deliver a service to the community. We take it very seriously. You know, we, we understand the value of this to Australia. And, and uh, we've said repeatedly publicly that when people cast a vote, it's like uh, they've, they've written out a democratic blank cheque that we cash for them safely at a point in time. So we're really excited by that. Uh, generally speaking, I think it's run pretty smoothly. Um, we see a lot of chatter on social media. That's a new thing for us. We're seeing uh, citizens pretty much tweeting about their experience each time they come back from the polling place. And uh, that's great in many ways because it shows people are engaged. Sometimes we get some commentary that's unhelpful. I might use an example. Um, you know, and this is no criticism, but there was a, an individual the other day who tweeted that uh, they, when they opened their postal vote, they had only received the Senate ballot paper, not the House of Reps, and they got a huge number of likes and commentary, and the way it normally runs, I'm using this as an example, is, oh my God, I can't believe the AEC has done this, how outrageous, and then there's a lot of likes and comments. And then somebody pointed out, have you actually looked inside the envelope and read the instructions? And of course, the ballot paper was there, but there's no follow-up to that. So it leaves an impression maybe that oh, maybe the postal vote's not running so well for the AC. It's running very smoothly. The activities are running well. The polling places are running smoothly. Our staff are doing a fantastic job. I should, I should point out that those temporary staff, probably already around about 5,000 or more than 5,000 people working for us, building up to 105,000 on polling day, they're all doing a fantastic job and we're very grateful. They are, as we say publicly, your parents and grandparents and your siblings and friends and, you know, they're doing something on behalf of Australia and we're very grateful for the work that they're doing. Excellent. Well, thank you for the update. Uh, there you have it. One week down, one week to go. We'll get to election night. There could be a little bit of a delay in the result given the high postal vote count, but all things go going pretty well. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Evan. Authorised by the Electoral Commissioner, Canberra.